Hello and welcome to my lesson on uh, three-dimensional geometry. In this lesson, I'm going to take you through the following uh, concepts. We are going to identify skew lines, projection of a line on a plane, the angle between a line and a plane, and an angle between two planes. And so I want us to begin. Now, beginning with skew lines, we're going to say the following, that um, these are lines that do not meet and they are not parallel. Skew lines are lines that do not meet and they are also not parallel. That's only possible because they do not lie on the same plane. Otherwise, they should be able to meet. Let's use this example here to illustrate. So we have the cuboid given on the screen there. Uh, if we have the line AG, HG, the line HG, that one, and the line BC, if you continue them in the direction that is given, there is no possibility that those two lines will ever meet. Remember the screen is a two-dimensional, but the figure is representing a three-dimensional um, object, which is actually a cuboid. If this was an actual cuboid, it's not possible for the line HG to ever meet BC, however much they'll be continued. So they qualify to be skewed lines. Again, the line AB and EH. If you take the line AB and EH, however much you continue those two lines, even backward like this, they'll never be able to meet if this is an actual cuboid. So lines that do not meet, and they're not parallel, they're called skew lines. The only reason they do not meet and they're not parallel is because they lie on different planes. They don't lie on the same plane. Now, a projection of a line on a plane. So I'm going to say this, that this really represents the shadow of a line on the given plane. The shadow of a line on its plane, on a given plane, is normally the projection of that line on the plane. So how is a line projected on the plane? It's its shadow on the plane. To illustrate that, I'm going to use this following um, example here. We have the planes, the plane A, B, C, D, and we have the line A, X. What would be the projection of A, X on A, B, C, D? The answer is the shadow of the line A, X on the plane A, B, C, D. And that shadow is going to be the line AY. Since AY is a, is a shadow of AXA, it's because there's some sort of light coming from top here, such that X falls on Y, and every point here falls on some point along the line AY. Therefore, the line AX projected on the line on the plane ABCD will be the line AY. Again, please understand that uh, since X falls on Y, this line is perpendicular to AY. And therefore, um, what we have here is a definition of right angle triangle where we have the lines AX being the hypotenuse and AY and AXY being the short sides, which are perpendicular sides of right angle triangle. Therefore, that defines what projection of line on a plane is. It is the shadow of the line on the plane. Normally, completed would form a um, right angle triangle as I have indicated there. Now the projection of the line BH on the plane ABCD. The, the line BH is, is shown there. BH on the plane ABCD. So the plane ABCD is a bottom plane and the BH is a diagonal from B to H. So the projection of that would actually be the line um, DB because this is the shadow of BH if somehow this line here was casting a shadow on the plane ABCD, that shadow would be the line uh, DB because we would have the source of light coming from on top of here, on top of somewhere here. H falls on D and therefore we have, um, we have the shadow shown there, which is DB. So that becomes the answer there. We would say that uh, DB is the answer because it's a shadow of BH on the plane ABCD. And that's that. The other thing. The projection of the line AG, AG, which is falling there, A to G, on the plane uh, BCGF, BCGF would be the answer, would be BG. The reason is, if this line AG ever cast a shadow on BCGF, it's because the light will be coming horizontally from beyond the plane ADHE, and therefore the point A will fall on D and all the points along the line AG would fall somewhere along the line BG. I think that's 
pretty pretty clear for you and therefore I'd say that the line BG is um, is that projection since it's a shadow of AG casts on on the plane BCGF we proceed to another concept and this time we look at the angle between a line and a plane and therefore I need to say that an angle between a line and a plane is normally the angle between the line and its projection on the given plane all right normally there's a projection of the line on the plane so the angle of that shadow or that projection on the on the plane and again the angle between the line and the projection on the plane actually defines the angle between the line and the plane so we use this example here we just use this previously so we have the plane a b c d and again the line a x a x projected on a b c d would be the line a y therefore the angle between a x this line this line here and the line the shadow a y that's the projection of the line a x that angle there is is the angle between the line and the plane and therefore that's 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 that now i should say that that the the figure we have there really represents a right angle triangle i already alluded to that previously so we have ax which was the line we were given and ay which is the shadow of the line ax on the plane abcd therefore that completes a right angle triangle we've just joined the lines at the points x and y so um that's it there so whenever we're talking about uh, the angle between the line and the plane we're also talking about a right angle triangle that is kind of defined in the in the process now angle between two planes the angle between two planes normally is the angle between two lines on the two planes which are perpendicular to the line of intersection of the two planes is normally the angle between two lines that means there are some two lines which are on the two planes those two lines are perpendicular to the line of intersection of the two planes the angle between those two lines is the angle between the two planes and law and so as i let's illustrate that let's use this example we have the planes a b c d we also have the plane a x y d normally any two planes will intersect along a line in our case a b c d is intersecting with a x y d along the line a d so that broken line there is the line of intersection such that any point any point on the line or along the line a d is simultaneously on this plane a x y d and also on the plane a b c d any point along this line is simultaneously on the two planes that are drawn for you so let's assume we have a line like the one that's broken there all right and that line is perpendicular to the line a d this broken line is perpendicular to the line ad that means uh, that gives us a first line on the first plane as uh, the definition goes on here so we have another one another line like that down there which is perpendicular to the line ad so the angle between those two the angle between the two lines which are simultaneously perpendicular to the line of intersection of the two planes that angle between the two lines is the angle we are look we are talking we are looking uh, we're looking for which is the angle between the two planes so the angle between the planes a x y d and the plane a b c d is the angle between these two lines which are simultaneously perpendicular to the line a d which is the line of intersection of the planes a b c d and a x y d We should illustrate that using an example and so i have a little technical example here for you we are told um, we're given this figure we're told find the angle between uh, vad and vbc vad is a slanting plane right triangular plane and vbc which is another slanting triangular um, plane on the pyramid given again we're given the measurement that uh, the slanting sides all of them are 12 and the base is square since uh, a b and a d are the same and they are six six centimeters long so first of all we are going to look for the line of intersection of the two planes this is a pyramid which has a vertex all right if this was a cube the plane b c would be would not be a triangle in shape so it would be a rectangle of some kind so that one and the plane ad would be adv or vad 
would be intersecting along the bro broken line there. So we're going to imagine there's a line of intersection of the planes VBC and VAD, which is the broken line there. And therefore, we look for two lines which are simultaneously um, perpendicular to that line. Those two lines, they should be in the two planes. The angle between the two lines should be the angle between the planes VAD and VBC. So the first thing is we have a line on the plane VBC, the broken line there, and we have it as it is perpendicular to the imaginary line of intersection of the planes VBC and VAD. Again, we have a line, another line, a broken line there, which is on the plane VAD, which we assume it's um, perpendicular to the line of intersection, the imaginary line there, that's the line of intersection of the two planes VAB, sort of VB, B, C, and V, A, D. Therefore, the angle we're looking for is the red angle there. Now, that's actually the definition, but now we need to go to the calculation. How does this work out? Now, the first thing we're going to do is uh, let's complete those two broken lines with another line below there. And a point O at the center, O is uh, perpendicularly below V. And we have a line V, uh, M, M, N, uh, where O is exactly the center. Please understand VM and VN are um, are the base sides, uh, sorry, two equal sides of um, an isosceles triangle. All right. So this length is the same as that length there, and MN is, is the bottom there. Now, please understand that MN also is six centimeters because MN is the same as AD, is the same as, uh, as AB, is the same as DC. So it should be six. That tells you that from M to O is three, O to N is three. And those are things that you should, you should be able to know even before you try out the question. Therefore, we have this triangle here. The angle we are looking for is the angle between the two planes. We said it's the angle between two lines. In our case, which was line VM and the line VN. They were both simultaneously perpendicular to the line of intersection, this line here. Of the two planes so we are looking for this angle here but since the triangle vmn is an associated triangle it can be divided into two by dropping a line v to o such that we have an angle here which is equal to the other angle there since these two triangles are um, such that v o n is a reflection of v o m all right since they are a reflection of each other each other there are two similar triangles and so we can look for angle of one and multiply by two, and that way we'll be able to get an answer. But as we continue, um, I'm going to make some assumptions here. I'm assuming you're able to look for the height of the pyramid. I'm also assuming that you're able to look for the length OC. I've just mentioned for them, for you there, this is the triangle VON. I've mentioned for you that the length OC is 4.2, but maybe let me explain uh, verbally how I arrived at that. Now, the distance from O to C is halfway the distance o A to C. And the distance AC is, using Pythagoras theorem, AB squared plus BC squared, square root of that. So this is 36, this is 6 squared, which is 36, plus 6 squared, which is 36. If you add those two, you get 72. Square root of 72 will be the distance AC. But because we wanted OC, OC should be a half of the square root of 72, which in my case was 4.24. Again, VO, which is the particular height, can be arrived at uh, since you you now you already have V, you already have OC, which is 4.24, uh, and we have VC. VC is given here; it is 12. You can use Pythagoras theorem again: 12 squared minus uh, 4.2 squared. You get the, uh, the you look for the square root of that. You get the, the the particular height of the diagram, uh, the of the pyramid, and so VO will be 11.2 three centimeters so we have that it is necessary it's only gotten after you already gotten the the ac ac you will only get it after you've gotten a sorry vo you will only get it when you already have oc and oc you will only get when you already have ac and ac is six squared plus six squared you divide that by two you look for the square root and divide by two it's assumed that at this level you should be able to look for such um, lengths in the in the given figure but let's concentrate on the concepts of 3D. Now, the question was, we look for the angle between VAD and VBC. I say that this angle here, a OVN, OVN, which is our case OVN here, 
is a half of the angle we are looking for. So we are going to look for this angle and just divide by, uh, and multiply by 2. And we get the angle that we are required to give. The angle between VAD and VBC. Now, I said that ON is 3 uh, in the beginning. Therefore, I'm going to say that tan theta, tan of this angle, is opposite over adjacent, which is 3 over 11.23, which is uh, that answer there. Look for the tan inverse of that. You get 14.96. That is OVN is 14.96. So what's the angle that we're looking for? That's MVN, which is angle between VAD and VBC. It should be 14.26 times 2 which is 29.92. And that explains the concept. I hope you got the introduction of what uh, 3D is all about, um, about those angles between a line and a plane, angle between two planes, and also projection of a line on a plane, and again, a skew line. We are going to use those ones a lot more in the coming lesson, where I'll be tackling actual questions on 3D, and I hope you, you will be able to get to build the concept satisfactorily. Thank you for watching. Always subscribe, share, and a good Madraka day.